Hey everyone, in order to keep your Roborock Q Revo running at optimum performance, maintenance will have to be conducted on certain parts of this unit at regular intervals. Not only will it keep it running like it was new, but it will address odor issues that some folks have been complaining about. So we're going to go through all the maintenance tasks that are prescribed by the company at regular intervals, plus a few extra steps that you can use to ensure that you don't run into some of the issues that people have been complaining about. We're going to jump right into it. Let's get started. I'll point out that emptying and filling the water as well as the dust bag is more upkeep than maintenance, but I'll be addressing it throughout this video anyhow. Notifications on the phone via the app does a great job of showing you what needs to be done. Within the app itself, there are also notifications as well as indications letting you know that there are maintenance functions needing to be done. The menu button on the top right has a red indication on it. We click that now. And then we scroll down to maintenance, which also has a red indicator on it, clicking that. This gives us a list of maintenance items and how much longer before they need to be completed. We're going to start with mop, which is replace as needed. First, let's look at some extra supplies I've picked up. This is a cheap kit with various parts that I picked up on Amazon for the Revo, because you don't know what's going to break or what you're going to need, when you're going to need it, or what's going to be dry because you washed it. So it's always good to have one. This includes two side brushes two mop pads, one main brush, two filters, as well as two dust bags. As we'll see later in the video, the ends of this main brush compared to the main brush that comes from Roborock are a bit different. This one has an end piece that pulls out and then this roller comes off. Just trying to point out that with aftermarket there can be some differences. I don't think that this in particular would affect performance in any way, but it's good to know. The mop pads seem very similar to the ones that come with the Roborock. The same can be said for these side brushes, as well as these two filters. The two dust bags also seem similar. Again, it's just good to have extra stuff around in case something is broken or you're washing something and you don't want to wait for the next day to be able to use the vacuum. I'll point out that an extra bag did come with the Roborock. Let's continue now with mop maintenance. I have a soft towel on the counter. I'm placing the Roborock on top of it. Clicking on mop in the app, it talks about replacing the mop because of stubborn stains or wear within the mop itself. In actuality, I'd only swap these out if they got so dirty that the base unit can no longer effectively clean them. But if I lift this whole piece off and take a look, these look like they were just washed in a washing machine or brand new. That's how effective the base unit is at cleaning these. But if it didn't and I had to remove it, the held on would velcro and I could just peel this whole fabric disc off from the plastic holder and toss them right in with the laundry. No problem at all. While they're off, there's an opportunity to clean up the Revo under the area where the mops reside. So I'll spray just a little bit of cleaner onto a paper towel and just clean up this area now. The wash mops or replacement mops are then placed back on their holders, centering them before pressing down securely. A magnet inside the Q Revo locks it back into position. Mop, mount installed. mop has no reset, so all we could do is hit the back button to take us back to our list. I'll point out that a mop that doesn't sufficiently dry after use is one of the causes of mildew which causes smell, especially in humid environments. In the settings menu, go over to dock settings and looking down at the bottom, make sure auto drying is set to on and take a look at the duration it's set for. Currently, the maximum you could set it to is four hours. If you find that whatever you're setting it to is not enough, increase it by one hour and check it after that amount of time to see if it's sufficiently dried. This is one important way to help with a mop odor problem, especially in humid environments. Another point on mitigating odor. When it comes time to empty the dirty water tank, it should come as no surprise that the smell coming from the dirty water tank is unpleasant. However, when emptying this tank, there's residual crud that forms on the bottom and it is a good idea to fill it up with some water and lock it down and give it a good shake and then empty it again to make sure that it's not collecting in there. Some people go as far as washing it out with some cleaner to ensure that the smell doesn't build up in it. Just a quick tip. 
Another item that I've come across to mitigate odor and bacterial growth is this silver ion module. Not available on Amazon, but found it on eBay. Not only to address the dirty water tank, but the clean water tank that's in the robot itself, so nothing grows in there. Provisions exist in my SA Pro Ultra tank for it, where we could see it's already installed. And we could see looking in the Q Revo tank, those same provisions are on the bottom, so I'll be installing it in there as well, and we'll check back in a future video. With the mop out of the way, we will focus our attention on the cleaning tank. We will remove, wash, inspect, and reinstall this item. I place the tray into the sink, and using warm, soapy water, the tray is scrubbed with a brush to remove all the debris that's collected on it. An old toothbrush would be ideal here. I didn't have one handy, so I'm using this larger scrub brush, but it's definitely not as easy to use as a toothbrush would have been. Some of the recesses still have dirt because the brush wasn't able to get in there, so I had to do some subsequent cleaning to get it all out. It's important that this tray be cleaned properly at regular intervals so that bacteria and mold doesn't accumulate and cause it to start smelling. This tray is now perfectly clean, except by this filter area here, and this can be squeezed to remove this filter, allowing for the cleaning of this plastic filter to remove any blockages or whatnot, as well as under the filter area as necessary, as we see here. So I'll just clean this filter as a separate unit, making sure none of the holes are blocked, making sure that float also moves freely, because that float detects when this is stuffed up so that the tray doesn't overflow. And then I could clean that area under the filter to remove any debris. Now the entire tray is clean. Everything will be dried off, checking all the recesses, making sure everything's nice and clean, or it could be left to drip dry overnight. The filter float assembly is then snapped back into position. And the float is checked one last time for function, make sure it's not binding. This tray is ready. Before the tray is reinstalled, we're going to clean the bottom of the base station with a mild cleaner. I spray everything and then wipe it down with a paper towel to remove any dust or debris or whatnot. Just a target of opportunity. The tray is then placed back into the base station, completing this portion of our maintenance procedure. One final inspection of everything at the bottom of the base station has everything perfectly clean, looking brand new, and ready for service. So maintenance down here is done. We'll move on. With the task of the cleaning tank completed, we can now click Reset, and then click OK. And the cleaning tank indication is back at 100%. Next, we'll be conducting maintenance on the sensors. So we'll select that now. On the underside, we can see these four sensors up front over here, as well as one in this recess. They could be cleaned with a Q-tip. These are not dirty. I'm just cleaning it because it says to do so. A paper towel is equally as effective at cleaning these sensors, except for obviously the one in the recess. I've placed a picture in the top right corner showing the location of all the sensors in this step for cleaning, including this lens up front, this lens in the rear, I also take this opportunity to clean the electrical charging contacts. And finally, this lens on the side, which is recessed. Having finished the sensor cleaning tasks, I now hit the reset button, and then I click OK, and we'll go back to our maintenance list. Continuing to work from under the unit, one item not mentioned in the maintenance is the front wheel that would only be addressed if it did not spin freely. But if this wheel wasn't spinning freely, it could be very gently pried out with a screwdriver, like so, and then check for hair or debris that were tangled up in between these two points here. We could see a small amount of hair has accumulated on this wheel. I remove it now, and then check that the bottom portion is free spinning. A small hole in the bottom portion provides access for the two screws, as we see here, if we needed to remove this section for replacement, repair, or cleaning. We don't need to remove this one, so what we're going to do now is just reinsert that wheel. So we're going to snap it right back into place, and that's it for the front wheel. Moving on to the side brush now, we have 83%. We're not going to be replacing it, but we are going to be servicing it. Bristles soften over time, replace after 200 hours of use. A small Phillips screwdriver is used to loosen the screws securing in the brush. The screw does not come out of the brush. The whole assembly lifts up at once. And we can see that this brush is really impacted with a lot of hair. And that could cause resistance to form on this brush, making it less efficient 
And I'm actually going to have to take a knife to cut and remove this hair because it's really intertwined. This should probably be inspected more often in this house. I could have gotten away with a scissor, but I happened to have a box cutter on hand, so I went and used that. The brush is now cleaned up, looking good. No dirt or debris here in this recess. And nothing in the side cleaning brush that's cleaned out. And because none of these brushes are bent or deformed, I could place it right back in, locking it into position, and using the screwdriver, gently tightening it back down. Not too tight. It's going into plastic. Don't want to crack it. Just a little snug. And that's all there is to it. Not replacing the side brush, I just hit the back button. And from here, we'll be making our way to the main brush. And even though there's 79%, we'll still be doing a maintenance on it and not replacing it. We'll come to find that maintenance happens many times over the course of the life of a particular part in this machine, even though it only instructs you to replace it after a certain number of hours of use. Squeezing these two locks allows the bracket to be removed, exposing the brush. We'll put this bracket off to the side for now and pull the brush straight out of the Revo. We can see a large accumulation of hair at both ends and that will reduce the overall efficiency. So we'll hold the end and turn the roller forward to dislodge the end, making it easy to remove all that hair that got stuck in the roller. And that'll really slow things down. That's a lot of hair. Some stuck here on the inside too, pulling all that out now. For something like this, the roller should definitely be checked more often. With the end cleaned out, the end cap can be placed right back on, turning it in the opposite direction to secure it, as we open up the next one in the same manner to remove all this hair and everything tangled up on this roller. And we can see that's an unbelievable amount of tangled hair and what have you. Looking inside the roller, I can still see more hair, but I dislodge it with a screwdriver or a pick, something to just bring it to the end so I can pull it out. And now this roll is cleaned, so we can put this cap back on, twisting in the opposite direction. And we can have a look at the area which the roll resides. Sometimes humidity or water collecting with dirt can build up accumulation here. This is not too bad at all, but I'm going to take some spray cleaner just to clean out this area as a target of opportunity. If you've ever vacuumed directly over a spill on the floor, you could be sure that this area will fill up with clumps of dust that'll form in the corners. Also take some time to quickly clean the roller cover. And if the roller proved to be really dirty, I might decide to take off the ends and wash it in the sink to remove any dirt that's on there, giving it a quick rinse with water first and then covering it with soap, then letting it sit for a while, finally rinsing everything off a couple of minutes later. cleaned off and without any noticeable wear, this roller looks as good as new. So once dried, I'll put the ends back on one at a time and insert it, observing the color-coded sides back into the machine, fits right in just like that. Take the cover, placing it back on and snapping it shut, completing the roller maintenance activities. We're not replacing the main brush, so I just hit the back button at this time. Now we'll be making our way to the filter, so we'll select that now. And while mine has 86 hours remaining, we'll still be conducting a maintenance on it. I'll start by removing any dust or dirt from the top of the unit. Getting in this section here where dust can collect. Then opening the top cover. And squeezing this clip to lift up and remove the filter assembly. There's some dust and debris on the bottom here. I'm going to blow this out outside right quick. Just a paper towel wiping it out, or a little bit of canned air is all it takes to blow that out. Now it's all clean, and we can see the roller just behind this passage, so we know everything here and behind here is clean. A quick visual inspection of the filter cartridge shows that nothing is damaged, and no dirt is too caked up in there. I see some dirt stuck in the corners. We're going to remove this filter, though. Pulling from the end tab, we pop it right out. And as this filter fills up with dirt, this is the quickest way to inefficiency of this vacuum cleaner. So it should be checked regularly to see if it's filling up with dirt and cleaned as necessary. Not using hot water, I turn on the sink and switch it over to the sprayer. And with the sprayer, try not to splash everywhere. We can see all that dirt coming out as I hit it. 
but that dirt comes out easy and it's not hard to do and a clean filter means a lot less power consumption for this unit. And with that I'll just give it a couple of shakes. The only problem with this filter is even though it comes out perfectly clean as we see here it looks like a brand new filter actually is that it's going to take overnight to dry easily. Definitely wouldn't want to put this back into the machine. And since that filter is going to dry overnight, I might as well wash out this container too to get some of that dirt that's accumulating in the corners, setting this back to sprayer, washing out this container completely. You can see this is not mandatory. This container was definitely not in a bad way, but why not? If I were using one of my spare filters and this container wasn't dirty and I had to get going quick, I would have foregone washing this container. But I did, and now we can see that it's perfectly clean. We need to only let it dry and it's ready to be reassembled. So overnight, it'll sit on the counter. The next day, the filter is dry, so we can reassemble it back into the unit. I place it back into the box, and it snaps. This will now go back into the Revo. Lifting the cover, I lower the filter assembly back in, snapping into place, installed. and lowering the cover, completing our maintenance on the dustbin. I didn't replace the filter, so I simply hit the back button. We now make our way to dust bag, which is the last one on the list. This is only replaced as needed, but we'll have a look anyway. Using two hands, the cover is pulled off from the front, revealing the dust bag beneath. This one is not nearly full, just showing it as an example. There's a handle on the left side that can be pulled, which closes the bag while simultaneously allowing for the removal of the bag. And we see that now. And this is the bag, partially filled, closed, and we're going to put it right back in because obviously this bag is still good. So I place it back into the unit, lining up these tracks right here. I slide it in, again making sure the bag is seated properly. I then push that handle in to open up the connection again. And now the cover can be placed back on. It's important that the cover is perfectly closed because there's a seal on here. And without that seal being good, there will be no vacuum to allow the dirt to be pulled into the bag. It snaps positively, and now it's shut. As you would expect, Roborock charges a small fortune for their bags, but you can find competitively priced bags on Amazon if you shop around. And the filter was our last step, completing all of the required maintenance tasks. All of this dog hair captured from the inner workings of the robot itself. And that concludes this video on the general maintenance of the Roborock Q Revo for performance and odor control. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video in this series comes out, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?